Hey everyone, and welcome back. I want to apologize for the delay we've experienced, but uh, nonetheless, we're back and ready to get started. So today we'll be importing our first character and going over the two different types of characters you might incorporate into your visual novel. I'm going to jump into my resources folder and show you one of the characters I've already got in here. So I've got a character named Avira, and she has a whole bunch of images she can use. Each one of these images is a separate file imported into Unity. And each image shows her body and expression. This is what's called a single layer character. A single layer character is just one that's going to use one object to render everything. So they'll render the body language of the character and the facial expression on one object. And to change one or the other, we need to essentially change them both because they're part of the same image. You may think, well, that sounds fine, and really it is, but the thing we need to keep in mind, though, is that in a situation where we may be using the same body language, but want to change the facial expression, we need to change the whole image. In my experience, this isn't a problem if your transitions are instant, but if you go for gradual transitions, you might notice some bleed-through of anything behind the character. Let's slow down and take a better look at that. So right here, even though the transition of this character's two images are moving at the same speed, there's still that moment in the middle where she looks sort of ghost-like with the background showing through her. To fix this, we'd implement what's called a multi-layer character, which is simply one that uses multiple renderers, each to display a different part of that character. So we could separate the face and the body and then control them separately, and this is actually the method that most VN developers use, simply because it gives you more control and looks better. For this series, I'm going to grab a multi-layer character from the Spriter's Resource webpage. Here you can see what I'm talking about by separating the face from the body. We've got all our expressions here, which can be overlaid on top of the character to get the expression we want, and the character itself just has a blank face. I settled on Raylene from a visual novel called Sakura Fantasy because she has different postures as well as different angles for more interesting results. And making a multi-layer character is just as easy as a single-layer one. Just draw the expressions on an overlay layer in some imaging program and export them separately as PNG files. Or just like this one, you can put them all in the same photo, but split it into sections of equal width and height. That way you can easily split the file into multiple sprites in Unity. So let's get started by importing the character file we're going to use. Inside of my resources folder, I've got a section specifically for the characters. So I'm just going to open it up and make a new folder for Raylene. As long as I spell it right, that is. Alright, and now paste, and there's my image. Okay, so now my image is here, and I just need to set the proper import settings. By default, if your application is in 3D mode, images are going to import as default textures. Start by clicking your image and changing that to sprite or UI, and change single to multiple if your image needs to be split. The filtering mode should be set to point if you want as close to pixel perfect as you can get. Then let's just apply these settings. Once that's done, since I'm going to split my character, I'll open up the sprite editor. But uh, right off the bat, you can see that this character is showing up really fuzzy. In fact, it looks really terrible. All that quality that we had is just gone, and now I all I have is a fuzzy mess. I mean, shoot, just look at those eyes. That's not something we want to display at all. Now the reason for this is the resolution the file is imported at. So you see the max res as 2048, which is pretty good, but not for this image. Because actually this character's image is much bigger than that, at 8679. So by importing at 2048, we've essentially compressed the image and lost a lot of detail. So to get it back, we're just going to change that 2048 to a number that's at least close to the actual resolution. So now let's apply that change and take a look at the result. And that's what I want to see. We've got the true quality of this character now. And the expressions look perfect. Alright, so now comes the fun part of splitting the character. But actually, I'm still in Springle my sprite, single sprite mode, so I can't really do anything here. So let me go ahead and change this to multiple mode. And apply. Okay, now we're good. Let me zoom in here so we can get to work. So you can see that each part of this character sheet is split into sections of equal size, visualized by blue lines. 
and since I know they're all the same size, I just need to figure out the dimensions of one portion to figure out how I need to split the rest of it. Click and drag to start making your own sprite, then just edit the bounds as you need. The reason I'm not auto-splitting here is because it tries to cut out as much empty space as it can, and for this particular sprite sheet, I need all of the empty space inside each one of these boxes. So I'm just going to line each bound up to the edge of the blue for the first sprite. And depending on how you make your sprite sheet will ultimately determine how you go about splitting it. But for this approach, we just want to figure out the size of each sprite area so we can split it into equal sections. Time to zoom in a little bit here. And initially, a multi-layer character seems like a lot more trouble to set up, but once you've got it, it's much more useful than a single layer. At least in my opinion, it is. Now, this line is a little fuzzy, so I don't want to get too close to it. That's about good right there. Okay, so with that done, I'm going to apply this change and just see how that one sprite will look in the engine. That way, if I am too close, I can just back off a little. But we'll figure it out when we get there. So the quickest way is just to drag the sprite into the scene. And I see blue, so the quality is good though. But I was right in that I'm too close to the edges all around this character. You can see those blue lines there. So let's go back and fix that by just taking them in a little bit. Apparently being right on the edge is too close. And then go back to the editor just to make sure. Yeah, it looks like that cleared it up. So when you click on your sprite, this display in the bottom right corner shows the dimensions of the currently selected sprite, so I know how large each one needs to be. But now I also need to know how much padding to put between them in order to exclude those blue lines. So I'll just make another sprite the width of this section to get my width padding. So that is a width of 5. Do the same for each area to get the width and height padding as well as the X and Y initial offset. Record it as you go to just make it a little easier on yourself. And after we have our sprite dimensions, padding, and offset, we can go up to the menu here and start splitting. Oh, seriously? Wow, I completely forgot what that was for a moment. Now that only took me a few minutes to get all that information, so it's not that big a deal for me to do for my characters. Just take it one at a time and it won't be so bad. So now figure out how you want to separate the expressions of your characters and split it into different parts so that you can use on your UI. Again, sprites can only be used with image components while textures can only be used by raw image components. But a texture imported as a sprite can be used as either one. Just the sprite will be a representation of the entire texture, so no splitting is going to be possible there. And after all that, Raylene is split up into each part, ignoring the blue lines. I've got my body language there. And I've also got my expressions. Alright, so that looks good. Now let's go back to the editor, and you can see each sprite here that I can use. This particular one has a different angle for the body and expressions, so I just have to match them up when I'm going to use them. Before we go, let me show how this multi-layer character is going to look. I've got my base layer, the body, right here, and to add the overlay expression, I'm just going to duplicate the image and replace it with one of the expression sprites. Like that. So the two work just as you'd expect to produce what really looks like a single layer character. Again, the advantage with this is the separate control of each layer in the character. I can change the face without changing the body, and vice versa. So choose your style of character, make the sprite sheets, and split them up, because in the next episode we're going to build and use our first character.